And your 17 health check now. The Comprehensive Blood and Cancer Center has openings for free mammograms next week. In order to qualify, though, you must be uninsured and low income. Also have a symptom such as a lump in your breast and be between the ages of 25 and 59. You can call the CBCC mammogram hotline at 616-6374 to schedule an appointment. The screenings are held every two weeks. Welcome back. Right now, the CBCC is holding clinical trials for a new drug to treat breast cancer. And joining us now, we have Dr. Ravi Patel and Jan, Jan Sudlett, who's also a participant in the trial. It's good to see both of you here this morning. And I am so fascinated by these. I was just asking you, Dr. Patel, first of all, what is the name of the drug and how long have you been conducting the clinical trials? It's been about a year. The name of the drug is pertuzumab. And uh, it is uh, sort of a, uh, the proverbial kind of magic bullet to attack only the cancer cells and spare the normal cells. Mm -hmm. So it works in patients who have a uh, aggressive form of breast cancer called HER2 breast cancer. And it's a drug which works with Herceptin in switching of the gene which particularly drives that cancer. Okay, and Jan, why did you decide to participate in this trial? Well, first of all, because um, we also have the drug Herceptin, and there were women who before me who were willing to go through that drug trial, which gave myself the drug and other women. So I felt that it was good um, to give back to future women. But also Dr. Patel and I felt strongly that this drug would benefit me, and so my prayer was to be able to be physically accepted into the study and then second of all to receive the drug versus a placebo it's a, a random draw if you will mm -hmm. it's because it's a double blind study so no one would be would know if yeah. I received the drug or not so at this point you know that you received the drug we know I received the drug and how did it work for you <laughs> um, well immediately we know I received the drug because I had a severe allergic reaction okay and as I sat in the chair I said uh, preparing to receive the drug for the first time I said to the nurse that I thought it would be really good that God would give me a sign that I have this drug. It would give me a lot of peace. And a few minutes, in, a few minutes into the infusion, there was the sign. So, mm. And it's worked very well for me. I think yes. Dr. Patel can address that. Yeah. Yes. And it's I was worked. asking you a little bit about how does that clinical trial work? I mean, how many stages does it go through before it actually can be available to the public? Uh, you know, uh, there's good news and bad news. The clinical trial actually now just closed. Mm -hmm. And that is because they've accrued enough data and now they're going to analyze the data and hopefully within the next 12 to 14 months the drug should become available to the patients. Mm -hmm. And Jan fortunately had a lot of faith and a great attitude and, uh, and it worked out for her because her cancer was uh, extremely aggressive, had spread extensively and, uh, and you know with her attitude and science both together working it worked out for her. And so at this point, her prognosis is great. I mean, she looks yes, terrific. She looks terrific, yes. That's terrific. All right. And do you have any other clinical trials coming up? Yeah, we do. We do have uh, trials related to other breast cancer and lung cancer, and also uh, drugs, uh, trials for colon cancer, which uh, we have ongoing. We actually have roughly about 35 different clinical trials going on. Wow. So if people are interested, they can contact the CBCC they and can. see if they qualify. They can. All right. Dr. Patel and Jan, thanks so much for coming in. I'm glad you're doing so well. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll see great things from this drug. Thank you. And stay with us. We'll be right All right, welcome back. Dr. Ravi Patel with Comprehensive Blood and Cancer Center is here now with his monthly cancer update. It's good to have you with us, as always. Thank you. And we have some great questions coming in today from some of your patients at the CBCC, so let's get right to those. The first one, uh, folks want to know, how severe is the nausea and vomiting, vomiting associated with chemotherapy? Of course, we hear a lot about that. And is yes. it preventable? Is there anything you can do? No, there's actually quite a bit that can be done nowadays. In the past, you know, you hear the story about people saying, 10, 12 years ago, their friends, family used to get so sick. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, 90% of the time, you can control the nausea and vomiting, and uh, they can live a good quality of life while they're getting chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. So no, the nausea and vomiting, very controllable, and uh, 
In the past, people used to be carried out of the chemotherapy area in a wheelchair. Now they can literally walk out. Wow. So what yeah, exactly. a difference. I know yeah. you'd hear about people being down and out sometimes for a couple of days just because it was so exhausting. Is that because the, the treatment has changed or we just know more about how to prevent it? It's more about how to prevent it. A lot of research has gone into preventing nausea and vomiting. Mm -hmm. So new medicines have come out which really control nausea and vomiting very effectively and keep you alert. Most of the previous medicines used to sort of make you grow and sleepy mm -hmm. but the newer generation medications uh, really keep you fully alert and 90 more than 90 percent plus uh, times we can control the nausea and yeah, vomiting. That's nice that's yeah. great. Let's talk about green tea. We've heard a lot about green tea and cancers. Can it uh -huh. reduce the risk of prostate cancers or any other cancers or is that just a myth? You know there's uh, the jury is still out there because there's a lot of debate going on uh, some studies periodically show that there's a benefit, and then other studies come out and show that there's uh, not significant benefit. Uh, there's definitely no harm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, ha having it in moderation is not a bad idea because it has antioxidants within it. But uh, you have to be careful about uh, some of the preliminary studies, like if a, a recent example is calcium. Uh, people said too little calcium, higher cancerous. So people started taking calcium. And now there's a new study which came out which said too much calcium, heart attacks. I so. saw that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, we're trying so. to help our bones and everything. Yeah. And then, yeah, the heart attack risk. So I think the middle path is the best approach. And uh, having green, there's, there's no definite evidence green tea reverses prostate cancer. But drinking in moderation, there's no harm in it, you know. All right. <laughs> Let's talk again. Another chemotherapy question. Uh, someone wants to know, does chemotherapy affect your immunity on a long-term basis? Um, other than when you're going through a bone marrow transplant, uh, you can be well protected. Because nowadays, again, the research has led to medicines which can protect your immunity. Um, when patients are undergoing chemotherapy, their white cells go down, and there are medicines we can give to bring them up and protect them from infections. Mm -hmm. So by and large, nowadays, again, you don't have to go into a room and lock yourself up and not be in contact with people. You can go out and mingle. And, uh, and most of the times, again, 90% plus times, you can protect the person from getting infections. That's nice. It definitely has changed because, like you said, we bit. always hear about those cases where they really, really suffer. And it sounds like things are in place now to help that a little bit. Quite a bit more. Actually. All right. Dr. Patel, thanks as always. And if you have a cancer question, you can always log on to our website at kget.com and click on Cancer Update. And thanks again. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back.